The Mad Discussions podcast is brought to you by the Morales Radio Hall. Visit moralesradiohall.com for all your event needs. Doing great. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Glad to be back. Okay, yeah. so, corny joke of the day. Y'all ready? All right, we ready. All right, Here this, we go. Let's go. Now, remember, it's corny, okay? All right. Okay. We've been warned. Now, <laughs> what do you call an alligator detective? I have no clue. I'm, I'm lost. Yeah, no idea. What do you call an alligator detective? You know this? Not uh An investigator. Oh, ah! my God. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Let's go. Come on, come on. Welcome, 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 welcome. Hey. Once again, thank you for joining us. Welcome to Mad Discussions with the Fly Guys, where we discuss music, art, and dance, and other life's topics. So um, I'm excited to be here. We've been tested with COVID, so yep. we're, we're clear. We're we, in the we clear. should be good. Yeah, all right. We should be all right. Okay. Yes, now, today, um, we're going to be talking about different topics, okay? Uh, but first, let's introduce ourselves to my left, I have. What's up, everybody? My name is Jesse Magana. I am a principal dancer for Fly Dance Company. And, and to o- my right? All right. Hey, hey, hey. Shadow Black here. I am an original Fly member from since 1995. I am now a uh, music producer now of 20 years. Glad to be here, man. Awesome. What's going well, sorry, on? Sorry, nice. Jesse, I think I cut you off. You were saying, too? Oh, I was just handing it <laughs> over, too. <laughs> I was just passing it <laughs> over. No worries. And my name is Jorge Casco, George Casco, the executive director for Fly Dance Company. I also have On the Love After School, where we do educational programs. Now, today, uh, we're like I said, we're going to talk about different topics. Now, if you don't know who we are, we're Fly Dance Company, based out of Houston, Texas. We travel all over the world doing performances, and we're actually going to be coming to your town, right? So um, we have a few shows coming up. So, Jesse, why don't you let the audience know where we're going to be? April 22nd, we'll be at the Memorial Auditorium in Burlington. We'll be doing some concert and workshops out there as well. July 10th, we'll be working with the Missouri Symphony at the Missouri Theater. December 4th, we'll be working with the Youngstown Symphony at the Dior Performing Arts Center in Youngstown, Ohio. That's right. All that's right. right. Round of applause. All round of applause. Right. right. Now make sure you come out and support and, sh- and um, you know, come check us out live. Like I said, we do awesome performances and uh, we dance all types of music from classical to anything you can think of. Now we're going to get into get into our first topic, uh, the hip hop culture, right? Um, there's a lot of uh, things that are happening in the hip hop culture as far as the music is concerned, right? Um, I know, Shadow, you being in the industry, and yes. what are some of the things that you've been noticing that's happening right now with the hip hop industry, brother? Well, man, um, you know, from you know, from the hip hop that we grew up in, um, it seems like there's like there's been a a lot of drug talk, drug culture. Um, just more, even more heavy. I know back back then, you know, we had we had the whole gangster thing, but uh, never, never. I don't, I don't. I remember this much heavy drug use constantly in every song. You know, so, you know, I I do like the music. I like yeah. some. I like I like the energy. Yeah. But you know, some of the the over uses of drugs just kind of throws me off from it. Absolutely, Jesse. What what, what have you been hearing about like the hip hop music in the nowadays? You know? uh, I mean, just to uh, just to piggyback off of what uh, Shadow said, um, you know, I have been hearing a lot of like drug use as well too, mm-hmm. which is kind of concerning because the youth they listen to this music like every single day. It's played on the radio. I mean, it's played on social media. It's all over TikTok and stuff. Yeah. So you know, it's, it's kind of concerning sometimes because these kids they take this music to heart. And you know, the other day I was like, well, I was at the grocery store. Yeah. And um, I heard this kid, He I forgot what song he was singing, but, like, he was singing about, like, you know, about, like, doing some drugs and stuff. And I was like, man, this kid's only, like, nine years old. Like, uh, he doesn't even know what he's, old? yeah, he's not even, he's not, wow. he doesn't even know what he's talking about. Yeah. So, I don't know, I just know that these kids are getting, like, influenced by artists out there, especially with hip-hop, because hip-hop's a very popular genre. Yeah. And so, if you're an artist out there, you have to be, you know, you have to be aware that there's young people that are listening to everything that y'all are singing about and stuff. Absolutely. What's sad to what's sad to say is though that um, a lot of these artists know that, but I don't really think that th- some of them don't really care. Yeah. They're like they'll they'll, they'll, they'll quit. They'll quick to say, "Well, I'm I'm not a role model." Yeah. You know, but in all essence, you are. You got these kids looking up to you. Like mm-hmm. your word is, you know, bond. You like they they're hanging on everything that you're saying. So yeah, you have to realize the influence and the power that you have when you're on that kind of platform. 
you know, yeah. so. Right. What do you say to people who, or artists that say, well, you know what, there's movies out there, you know, like, you know, that, like, gangster movies, there's there's action movies, and things of that nature, right? So, the argument, or, you know, to, pay, to play devil, devil's advocate, right, it's like, um, I, I, when you, when I hear those comments, you know, um, I don't think it's an scapegoat. But I do feel that it's the parent's responsibility or the guardian, whoever, right. whether it's grandma, right, or whether it's dad or mom or you know, foster parent, whoever it is, right, we have to educate these kids and let them know that this is entertainment. Yes. You know, us, us watching the Terminator movies, I never thought that I was going to become the Terminator. And right. And yeah. <laughs> these things or watching Goodfellas, knowing that that lifestyle, you know, you end up. In, in in that type of environment, and you know, you become a statistic or a statistic, excuse me, all right. But we know it's a movie, you know, it's entertainment, and that's where I feel that a lot of these kids now, because of social media, right, mm -hmm. um, and it's so prevalent and it's in their face, they feel like social media might be the truth. But there's a lot of artists who use social media to portray a, uh, you know, not even rappers, just people, just you know, people that are you know influencers yes. portray something on social media that are actually not right. Yeah, and I know we were talking at one point, Jesse. You were saying there was like a lot of these trends that were happening, uh, like these challenges, and right? Stuff, you know, and you had mentioned something about like the yeah, yeah. Challenge. There was like a there was like a Tide Pod challenge. There was like a, a Kylie Jenner challenge mm -hmm. where they had to put like their lips inside like a bottle. Wow! And so they would pop it out, and it'll, it'll cause their lips to swell and stuff <laughs> yeah. like that. And a lot of kids actually got sent to the hospital because they ended up damaging their own self, For especially sure. with the Tide Pods. Like, that has a lot of chemicals so in there. So, so they basically were, like, eating them? Yeah, they yes. were supposed to, like, eat them and stuff. Wow. Yeah. So it, uh, to go off of what you just said, yeah. I believe is uh, we all have a responsibility right. as artists, as parents, you know, uh, teachers and other authority figures. I, I think we all have a we all have a responsibility. But the biggest responsibility comes on the parents. Yeah. You know, you let your kids know, hey, this is just entertainment. Hey, the stuff that you're hearing in this music, it's not, um, it's not all true. It's all, you know, it's all gimmick. It's all, it's, all, it's just for entertainment. And then some of the stuff you shouldn't be letting your kids listen to it anyway, because it's, it's adult music. Majority of it is. So. Yeah, and it has the parental advisory stickers, but I think that sometimes makes kids want to see it. Yeah, you know? yeah. makes you want to do something. When you're told not to do something, of course you're actually gonna do it. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's just the curiosity and uh, being a teen and you know trying right. to figure it out on your exactly. own. You know, one of the things that I have been noticing, which is. Um, a little bit disturbing and my heart goes out to people who who are dealing with this especially in this time you know a lot of these musicians are losing their lives you know and that's something that's scary man people are a lot of these rappers are getting shot you know and you know there's there's just a lot of great artists who have passed away you know due to drug usage and to gang. you know the to the violence you know yep. gang, violence gang violence things of that nature you know the gang affiliation absolutely yeah. so just understand that for the youth that that's out there that's listening just remember that you know it's entertainment you know they're there to entertain you and don't take things too literal you know don't take things that um that a lot of these rappers are doing or a lot of these musicians because i'm just not going to put it on on, on hip-hop i'm gonna put it on a lot of these other musicians too you know like they're they're not just uh, living that lifestyle, or they're living it in front of you, but understand that there's there's some truth. Because a lot of these people, a lot of these rappers are are doing good out there, yeah. and they're using social media uh, for positive things, yes. you know, and to to push the culture forward and, and to do um, things that are that are that are more positive versus something negative, you know. Actually, um, what what are, what are some pros and cons you think that social media? Uh, brings to the table with Jesse. Man, well, for one, I would have to say the a pro for social media, I could say is like uh, promotion and for marketing and all kinds of stuff. Like if you have a business or if you're like a professional dancer, everybody's like it's a big trend to be on social media. Like Instagram, you yeah. could get a lot of bookings off of that. Yeah. If you could, you could get connected with other dancers. You could get connected with different agents, people who hire you for different gigs. Um, you can also you can also be a positive role model as well too. Yeah. One con though is like how we spoke about is that if you start doing something negative and you have like a big following or a big fan base, you're influencing a lot of people in the world to follow you. And if you're not doing the right thing, you know they're gonna follow your footsteps as well. Yeah. But I would see it as you have to you have to look at it as as a platform. It's mm -hmm. another platform that we could use as artists. You yeah. know. Wait, sure. any, you want to add on uh, to that? I, I, um, I'm, I agree with uh, with Jesse, man. It's just a, it's a tool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, just like um, it's no different than 
a hammer or a drill. It's a tool. Absolutely. Uh, promote your business, promote yourself, promote your brand, um, just to get yourself out there, uh, network and communicate with other people that mm -hmm. have the same interests, that's doing the same things or, that you're doing, or if you're providing a service. It's a way to get get your get yourself out there and get whatever it is that you're promoting. You know, out there, you know, it's just a, it's the new way of advertising. Absolutely. Now, mm -hmm. you know, so. and, and, you know, that's a great analogy saying the tool, because with the tool, if it's used correctly, it can help you. It can help you put up, you know, a picture frame. You nail that nail. You hang something. It looks nice. You're decorating your home. Absolutely. But if you miss. Yeah. <laughs> there goes your finger. <laughs> and you bam your finger. That tool that just helped you is going to hurt you. It can hurt you. you know? well. So yeah. let's talk about some, some cons, right? Right. What are some cons of, of, of this of this uh, social media? Well, one thing for sure is that I know a lot of times people, you know, everybody has their own way of uh, expressing themselves. And there's times where people get kind of get caught up in the moment. Mm -hmm. And they might post something because they're feeling a certain type of way. And the next thing you know... They're in a different mood, and they look back, and they might regret posting it. What so they like post, they get embarrassed, or they might say something inappropriate, and it mm -hmm. could affect their, they could, it could affect their business. You know, yeah. like if you have, uh, if you have like a hip hop group, and you're like a director for kids, and uh, you post something on there that's like drug related, or that's like not suitable for children, yeah, and parents see that. Yeah, they won't look at you the same way. Absolutely. They'll they'll probably take their kids out of your program and stuff like that. Yeah, and just other other ways like that, you know. Yeah, a anything to to add to that? Um, no, I, I agree with with Jesse wholeheartedly, man. Um, you know, a lot of clout chasing. Um, clout chasing. Mm -hmm. Clout chasing. Well, what is um, what is clout for people who don't know? Clout chasing is when you're 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 basically you're chasing fame. You're chasing. You're you're looking for. You're seeking attention. Mm -hmm. And you and when you're doing it for clout you're you would do just about any and everything for it. you know any I, I, there's no there's no holes bar there's so, no line to be drawn so let's let's have that conversation a little bit let's say i'm somebody who doesn't use social media or that has nothing to do with social media <laughs> why why is clout a bad thing because isn't that what you're attention, supposed to do in, attention, in social media right get attention attention is not a bad thing um mm -hmm. uh, it's the the type of attention that you're seeking, Correct. right? You know, there's a lot of people that think that any attention is good attention, mm -hmm. bad or good. You know, or what do they say? Bad press is still good press. Yeah. You know, I I just don't agree with there's that. There's no bad press. You know. Yeah, there is no bad press. Yeah. It's That's all, what they it's say. Just, it's just all press. Yeah. But it can affect your image. It yeah. can affect um, it can affect you later on down the line. You may not. It may not, right there immediately, but it can. You Let's know, unpack can, that. You're saying it, it can affect you later down like down the line. You know, it, it, it messes with your self-confidence. It, it, it hurts your, your self-identity, whether you know it or not. It's a, for a fact, you know, I don't know the exact numbers, you know, but I know it's, it's, it's a proven fact that especially when working with youth and in schools and things of that nature, right, wh we, what we're seeing is a lot more cases of depression right. that's related to social media, you know. Yeah. And I'm from the era to where I remember, and I've dealt with depression, so I'm not saying something, you know, I'm not saying that. You know, you're not trying to negate. Yeah, I'm not saying anything mm -hmm. negative about it, but all I'm saying is that when, I, when I'm on social media, I look at stuff, you know, I usually go, if I see, a, like, a yacht or, <laughs> or I see, like, something that I'm like, oh, wow, that's interesting, or somebody in a vacation, I'm like, man, that's, man, that's cool. You know, I need to work hard to get that, or I need to. I gotta get my stuff know, together. Right? Yeah, I gotta get. Yeah, I, I, I need. I need to work a little bit harder. You know? yeah. Like I got, you know, I don't have that, you know. Versus, you know, some of these these kids that see this stuff and they just automatically get depressed. I don't know why that is, you know, instead of switching that switch in their head, you know, after a while, they just kind of, they just see all this stuff. And then instead of saying, I'm going to go get it, it's more like, why me? Why yeah. Me? And then not, not only that, they see those things and they're like, yeah, I'm going to go get it. But like, how are you going to get it? Ooh, By exactly. any means necessary? Yeah. And they don't, they're seeing everybody, they're seeing everything on these rappers and the social media, everybody's balling, they're having money. And like you said, the yachts and the cars and clothes. Yeah. And um, and so they're like, man, I, I, these youngsters, these 17 year olds, 18 year olds, they want that quick. Yeah. They want yeah. it fast. They don't mm -hmm. want to go work at a, a clothing store. They don't want to go work at a fast food or at the grocery store. They want to, you know, they just want the big money fast. And it's like, no, you got to, it takes time to get there. It's yeah, baby yeah. steps. You got to crawl before you walk. You just, you can't just go up into an office building <laughs> and get it, you know, and get this, 
hundred thousand, hundred fifty thousand dollars salary. You ain't even been to college yet. Yeah, you absolutely. know what I'm saying? What have you done in order? What are you doing in order to acquire those things? And, and I think people's pride also gets in the way too. You know, it's like I, I'm not gonna work at McDonald's or I'm not gonna work at you know at a, a supermarket. And it's funny because I was watching an interview that Jay Z was on. And, you know, Sean Carter, for those of you who know, obviously, for those of you who don't know, he's a musician, an entrepreneur, you know, like I think hip hop's one of hip hop's billionaires or something like that. And uh, what I when he was saying that he came up in the streets. Right. And he said the time that he actually spent in the streets doing negative activity. Right. Um, if he would have just worked at McDonald's, <laughs> he probably would have made more money that way, you know. But like I said, you know, people have this this like you were saying, people have this perception that, you know, they want to do things you know, to get themselves in a better position, but they're willing to risk their lives for it, you know? Exactly. And, it's, and it's unfortunate that, you know, that thing, those things do happen. And instead of taking the longer route, you know, taking that two, three years of that job that you really don't like, but maybe saving some money, right? And then being able to, you know, elevate yourself yes. and invest it in yourself, yes. right? And, and push and create something. You know, for us, it was, you know, uh, this dance company, right? Fly, you know, and being able to, to to push it and 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 move it forward right um getting with kathy in the early years kathy wood the founder of fly yes. you know uh taught taught me the game and i was able to see that and when the opportunity came for us to you know for me to make that move and say hey kathy i think i want to uh take over that company right and she felt that you know what not only are you going to keep the brand going but you have the knowledge to do that, yes. right? And from that, I was able to start on the love and have my Henry the Hip Hop Hippo, and have, and have sold lots of books because of that, right there. You know, big what shout I mean? out to Henry the Hip Hop Hippo. Henry the Hip Hop Hippo. Go hey. to onlylove.com and big shout order out. that. But um, but the thing is that you know, um, I was able to invest in myself, even with this podcast, right? And we're we're spending time you know to come here out of our busy schedules you know so you guys you know uh, you being a music producer right talk about that you know like you know, your life after fly right and you p invested into yourself and we've talked about you know you having different businesses and yes. things of that nature but l let's talk to that kid who's out there who wants to be in music right so um how hard has it been or, or what are some 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 things that you can give them to to some knowledge on that you know man honestly the hardest thing uh, doing getting started doing anything, whether it be a business or uh, you know taking on a new hobby, anything that, that you're about to embark on, and, and you know, and it's going to take you that 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 leap of faith for you to do it. It can be uh, you know, it can be a bit discouraging sometimes because you don't know what yeah. to do. You don't know. It's that that fear of the unknown. Mm -hmm. right. You know. So the the hardest thing was just me battling myself in my mind, getting mm -hmm. myself to just to do it. You yeah. know. So. Um, that there's something that you're passionate about, whether it be music, sports, uh, entrepreneurship, you got to take that leap of faith mm -hmm. and go ahead and invest in yourself. Ooh, do you say that? Say that one more time. That you have to take that leap of you have to take that leap of faith and invest in yourself. Invest in yourself. So mm -hmm. that's what we're telling you guys. Invest in yourself. If you don't invest in yourself, Who what else? makes you think <laughs> that somebody else is going to invest in you? Preach. Think about that yep, right that's there. That's true. Right? Now, Jesse, you have a brand, of a uh, clothing brand, and you've been working with that for a few years, right? Right. So, so let's touch on that, man, because this is something that's it's been a passion of yours, but it hasn't been easy. Some people think that, hey, it's just easy to, I'm just going to put my name on a logo and just get it out there. What are some difficult, or some challenges that you, that you're, that you went through that uh, you can share with the, with, with the youth out there? Well, just like Shadow said, the first one was to actually just do it. You mm -hmm. know, uh, uh, I have a clothing brand. It's called The 93. Originally, it was called 1993, but we just actually revamped the, mm -hmm. the whole company, and we got a brand new logo. Mm -hmm. uh, shout out to Frank Hicks. He's a, he's a, actually a former Fly Kids. Oh, let's give him a shout yeah, out. Yeah, Frank right. Hicks is actually a former Fly Kids member, and um, now he's into like graphic design. He went to wow. school for that, and that's his, that's his profession. That's and awesome. actually, we actually got to link up with him, and he's the one who created our new logo. And real quick, listen, in case they don't know, what, is, what was Fly Kids, and what was that? So Fly Kids was a spinoff group from Fly Dance Company. Kathy Wood partnered up with um, a local dance teacher, mm -hmm. and they created a, a, a mini group called Fly Kids where right. we got, like, I think it was, like, 20 of us. We were all, like, the ages of, like, 8 to 10, mm -hmm. and we were basically, like, like, a mini version of Fly Dance Company. We did shows. We learned how to be uh, professional dancers as well at a young age. Uh, we also like taught workshops and stuff to other students. Wow. So that was a, it was a wild experience because um, I remember we got booked to go teach a workshop mm -hmm. 
And Kathy walked in with like 10 kids. And uh, the lady who hired us was all like, oh, you brought your own kids to come and take the workshop too? <laughs> and she was all like, no, they're teaching the workshop. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, they're teaching the workshop. They're the same age as the kids that are here. And she's all uh, like, well, you, just have, you have to wait and see. <laughs> and that actually helped out a lot too because uh, the other kids seeing us teaching yeah. them like that, yeah. it got them motivated and oh, inspired man. to get into dance and like wow. that. Let's, that's give, very let's give it up for Kathy one more yeah, time. Yeah. And Absolutely. Just like kids, who would have thought, Shadow? Uh, you started, who would have thought that when you started this, bro? <laughs> 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 it would be that, right? <laughs> That's awesome, man. But uh, yeah. So, so he was so the designer that did your logo. Now he's uh, he uh, he was he came from that. Yeah, he from came that. from that same background wow. too. Wow. But dope. I mean, to say, uh, yeah, it's just one thing is to actually just do it. Yeah. You know, another thing too is that like you just have to do a lot of research. You have to know yes. what you're doing because if you just start going out there not knowing what to do, it's, it could, it could kind of get you in a bigger mess. You know what I mean? So yeah. right now, uh, we have four people in it. It's uh me. Mm -hmm. Uh, my friend Gustavo Trevino, yeah. and he was a Fly Kids too. Absolutely, shout out. And yeah. uh, I have hey. my friend Miguel, Miguel Lavage, mm -hmm. and uh, my Ve. She's uh, she also is part of the team too. When we first started it, it was about three years ago, mm -hmm. and it was just me and Gus. And uh, ever since then, we've been working hard with it. it. It's a lot of responsibility, you know. We learn as we go, yeah. and um, it's a lot to do because you have to do the marketing, you have yep. to do the finances, you have to do the inventory. Yeah. You know, you got to build the website, then you got to manage sales. Mm. So it's a lot of work, but the way I see it is uh, life is short. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to be busy working, you might as well you put everything into something that you love yes. and something that you really want to do. Yeah. Because, you know, life's too short and you don't want to have any regrets. Yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I think um, having a product that, that can deliver, you know, like mm -hmm. when somebody places an order, make sure you deliver that. Right. right. Um, uh, Shadow, any 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 tips for our ent entrepreneurs out there? Uh, anything that we probably didn't touch on that, w that you want to shine the light on? Uh, just know that um, a lot of people think that when you work for yourself that it's, it's, a, it's easier and you just have all this time and free time it's like it, it could be the furthest thing <laughs> from the truth yeah you actually you have to work that much harder correct now you're you don't you're not going to get a, a guaranteed uh vacation holiday you're not going to get a guaranteed mm -hmm. paycheck every week or every two weeks mm -hmm. you know you actually have to make you have to ensure that you go get that paycheck Absolutely. if you want a day off you have to work hard enough to be able to afford that day off yeah. so when you have when you work for yourself you have to work 10 times as hard. Absolutely. You, there is no day off. So that's why you got to make sure that you're doing something yep. that you're passionate about and you love doing. Mm -hmm. um, another thing um, I'm just going to jump, just touch on real quick. Um, you, I, I would like for people to, to, to start, start taking um, their finances uh, a little more serious. And when I say finances, start looking into to getting your, uh, you know, getting your, getting your credit, you know, getting your mm -hmm. credit right. So that you can, because it, it's going to op open up more doors for you. Absolutely. You know, if you're trying to get that house, you're trying to get a vehicle. Like nowadays, you can't even get a phone mm -hmm. <laughs> without, Absolutely. With, if you got, if your credit's not good. So I just wanted to touch up on that, um, you know, to start, hey, get your get your credit right. Um, start, in, look, start investing versus spending. Yeah. Or Google, you know, uh, bad credit into good credit or <laughs> or, or <laughs> you, you can get with me because i also have buddies who uh who do uh credit repair the 750 Absolutely. club and how can they how can we oh and you can uh you can email me okay. at gary jose 2375 at gmail.com or you can just hit my line 832-907-2808 so we'll do that all right for sure so make sure if you need some help with your finances uh make sure you reach out to shadow um gotcha. now Let's kind of change gears a little bit, right? So, uh, everything that we saw, um, actually, let's. It's, it's time for actually, it's time for some world news. Some world is it time news, for right? some world it's news? Time for some world news. It I think is it's time, time for, for some, some world, time for world news. news. And now, I am your host, Jorge Casco from Channel Two. <laughs> and and to my left, I have Jesse with the weather. And I have to my right uh, Shadow Black here with the weather report. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, well, hey, guess what, guys? Uh, we have a new president. Hey! hey round of applause yeah. for the new, new president. president. Hey. hey! Come on, come on, come on, come on. Where's that? Where's that? Yeah. That's right. That's right. Hey, man. You know, I think uh, 
I think the the world is is, is changing. Obviously, yes. <laughs> the world is changing, right? Uh, I think this is gonna this is a, this is good for the country as far as you know the energy, right? Mm -hmm. We're not we're not saying political parties. We don't we're not talking about that. I'm just saying just the energy. Just a different energy. It's a different energy yeah. around the world. So you know, congratulations to our new president, Mr. Biden. You know, for uh, you know for winning the for, for winning the race. And, and um, also shout out to the vice president, Kamala Harris. Hey, round of applause. Hey. Hey. That's right. Yo. That's right. That's right. Right, the first female vice president, right. first female vice president of color. There you go. Yeah, and, and that's, that's history. Two, that's two and that's one. Two and one, that's two bro. For one right mm -hmm. there, right? So I'm excited to see, you know, what what you know what what's gonna happen, you know, and I and I feel that that's something good, you know, just coming back from, you know, everything we just went through, you know, mm -hmm. especially um, how everything just happened as far as you know the police brutality, the pandemic, the pandemic. You yeah. know, it's been a rough yeah. past four years. It's yeah. been a rough year. You know, we lost a lot of people. You know, like I said earlier, we, you know, we're, we're losing a lot, our, a lot of our artists. So, you know, um, our heart goes out to you guys. You know, from George Floyd to Breonna Taylor, and, and you know, everyone else is too many to to name. Um, I think that um, CBS News reported that um, the police uh, in the U.S. killed over 164 African Americans in the first eight months of 2020 you wow. know and it's just that was, that, 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 was the, that was a pandemic in itself mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's just one race and this is you know yeah. and this is something that's that not just happened in 2020 that's been going on oh, for years you know uh, and on, it's man. sad because there's a lot of good cops out there there's a lot of you know hard working you know uh police that secure military you uh, shadow you're ex-military you're it's in the so. navy so you know how important that is yes. you know but unfortunately, you know that's life, and these are, these are, these are hard topics to talk about, and, you know. And some people like to sweep these things under the rug, but you know here, especially coming from where we come from, exactly. You know, <laughs> and a lot of people don't want to hear this, and I'm sorry that if this is offending you, if you know, or whatever. But the reality of it is, is you know, we have to, we have to reveal, you know, yeah, we have to reveal it, we have to reveal our pain, yeah, because, you know, if not then how do we start the healing process? Exactly. You know, you got to address the pain in order to heal. Yes, right. Sir. You know, and I feel that us talking about it, and like I said, truth. we're not saying anything negative about the police department or anything like that because in, we were talking about the uh, previous episodes, you know, some great things that have oh, happened absolutely. with us. There's you some know? good cops out there. It's an, absolutely, yeah, you know. But it's the truth, right? So we lost a lot of people, and we just want to do a quick 10 seconds, a moment of silence for everyone we've lost, so. Starting now. I actually want to talk about somebody who's um, who's an amazing artist. His name is Rennie Harris. Rennie uh, Harris. Lorenzo Rennie Harris. He's from Philadelphia, and he was. I think he's like the first um, person to ever put street dances on stage. Um, in the theater, right? And Mr. Rennie Harris is—I've um, I, I've had the—I've uh, uh, had a great relationship with Rennie for years, and we got really close, especially when we when we launched relaunched Fly. And I just want to just read some things about about Lorenzo, right? So he in 2020, uh, he was the winner of a 275,000 arts uh, arts Ooh. award. So let's give him a big Ooh. round of applause. Yeah. Big Ooh. shout out Mr. to Rennie, Rennie Harris. Oh, Rennie Harris. That's remarkable. Representing. That's, that's not only black history, that's American history. How about that? Wow. <laughs> hip hop and hip hop history. That's hip hop, hip -hop history, history, right? So, Reddy, we love you. Yes, Reddy's sir. gonna be on our podcast. He's gonna come on. We're right. gonna have him. Um, but Lorenzo, Reddy, I love you, man. We just want to send we our love you. and just let you know that you're an awesome man. Uh, Reddy's uh, created works, Roman Jewels. Um, he's done awesome stuff with uh he's put uh, set work for alvin ailey as well and i mean the list goes on and on and on so if you're by a computer google randy harris man he's an awesome 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 human being and i just want to let you know again he's from philadelphia 
So uh, Rainy Harris Pure Movement, they're an amazing, amazing, amazing dance company. And I just want to, uh, we want to end on that note, right? Wow, so, hey, so, I, so didn't, I didn't know that the London Times wrote that he was the best skit of the U.S. contemporary dancing. Let's, wow. Let's give it, let's give it up Whoa. right there. Let's give <laughs> That's huge. That boy, Rainy Harris. Absolutely, absolutely. And there's, there's so many. He's gotten the Governor's Award. I mean, he had uh, the, the Herb Albert Award in the arts. You know what I mean? He, I mean, there's, there's so many, so many, so many. He's like, he's known as the Basquiat of the U.S. contemporary dance scene. He's I also mean, an honorary doctorate from the Bates College. He has a, a doctorate. A, what is it? How do you say a doctorate? A doctorate, yeah. A doctorate in hip hop. Wow. <laughs> so he's doctor. That that is I remarkable. Mean, let's one more time. Let's man. give it up to Mr. Randy Harris, man. He's Dr. Randy Harris. Uh, we're so yes. so proud to say that he is a fly advisor. And then once once he comes on the on the podcast, um, we're gonna go go in depth with that. But we just want to we we'll, but we just want to tell you guys, you know, thank you for tuning in. Um, if you're dealing with depression, if you're on social media, if you're a kid who who's seeing all these things and it's affecting you, you feel like you know you have no one to talk to. You know, for us, it was art and dance and music that Absolutely. saved our lives. Right? We pushed that and that 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 we pushed that that narrative forward and let people know that that helped us out. So for you, find something that you love to do, whether it's art, music, dance, whether it's uh, uh, your grades, something positive, you know, let excellence be your, your let excellence be your floor while you reach for greatness, you know, and, and reach for the stars, set your standards high. And, you know, you never know, you might succeed, right? And and if you don't, you'll get closer to, than where you were before, right? Absolutely. And if you're dealing with depression, if any of that, um, anything that we talked about is something that you're dealing with, there's a number that you can call, the, call the Harris Center at 713-970-7000. 713-970-7000. Uh, they take calls nice. in English and Spanish. So once again, thank you guys so much for tuning in. To my left, I have Jesse Magana. To my right, I have Shadow Black. All right. Now, if you want to catch us live, Jesse, one more time, let them know where we're going to be. April 22nd, that's we right, will right, be right, at the right. Memorial Auditorium yeah. in Burlington. July 10th, we'll be working with the Missouri Symphony. December 4th, hey. we'll be working with the Youngstown Symphony right. at the Dior Performing Arts Center in Youngstown, Ohio. Awesome. We hope to see you. Awesome. We'll see you next time on Peace Mad Discussion. Blessings, peace, peace. and blessings.